Awesome. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, coming to uh, see me education. I uh, want to add a quick disclaimer. I am not a speaker, um, so set expectations low for speaking. However, I am my mom's favorite because I'm a child. So, uh, but anyway, I uh, uh, appreciate SEMA Education, Zane and the crew asking me to uh, share. Uh, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, killing status quo. And uh, a little bit about me, for those who don't know you, I uh, founded uh, Realtruck.com in the basement of a duplex in 1998. And that company grew over to 100 million in e-commerce sales without touching a product. Uh, also founded Redhead Rebel, which has multiple brands under it. And then uh, a rookie author, my book, Principles of Fortune, which is, uh, I mainly wrote it because I wanted to share the real truck story because I think it's pretty cool that, you know, how does a little old company from North Dakota with no Ivy League people or resources go from a basement to 100 million in e-commerce sales? Anyway, so that's the question, right? How, how does this little company go from a basement and grow that much? And obviously, uh, being the founder, uh, a lot of times I get a lot of juice for it, but the reality of it is, I was just kind of the guy holding the tent in the circus, keeping the tent up, so to speak, because it requires a lot of people to uh, make something really neat happen and to become an icon for how companies should treat customers, partners, and employees. How, how it happens is principles and culture. I, I would rather answer some questions that perhaps you have they may not be the right answers, but I'll try to answer them. Uh, then just go on and on about stuff that maybe you're not interested in. Killing status quo, you know, nobody likes to be treated average. Like anyone here like to be treated average, like a nobody? Kind of, you know, average is kind of, uh, everybody likes to be treated a little bit special. To kill status quo, the beginning of it is to deliver more and to ask questions around that. And so with the employees, we needed to ask some questions like, what are we doing that's not even status quo around our staff, right? And then we needed to ask questions about what are we doing that's just status quo? And then we needed to start asking questions like what are three things the company can do to deliver more to the staff? Make it in a personal level, what are three things I can do or my team do to deliver more to our staff? And of course, we started this process of asking these questions around customers, staff and business partners and of course if you deliver more to your customers guess what they will tell their friends and that is the best form of advertising that you could ever do is make an experience special create a memorable experience you know ultimately if you wow your customers it's the cheapest advertising ever because again they tell their friends about you and we tried to be great at a few things we tried to be great at that time at customer service, really, really great at customer service. Also to make be the easiest place online to find what fits your ride. Going back to on our customers, we needed to ask ourselves, what are the things that we're doing with around customers that it's not even status quo, not even keeping pace. And again, what are three things our organization can do to deliver more to customers? What are what are some things I can do personally? to deliver more to customers. What's standing in my way, what's standing in other people's way of doing that? And we started to get those answers. If you deliver more <coughs> to your business partners, oftentimes people look at relationships with business buying and selling as this poker game and arm twisting and give me the best deal. And, and my experience has been to look at it, of what can I do to deliver more to my business partners? And again, happy business partners, of course, they reciprocate and they'll take care of you. In the case of like, at that time with UPS, they were running national ads for us just because it started with questions like, hey, uh, business partner, what can we do to be a better business uh, partner and then shut up and listen? Uh, it started with that kind of uh, concept. We started asking questions around that. What are we doing that's not even status quo with business partners? What, what can our organization do to deliver more to our business partners? And what's standing in our way of doing this? Little thing here, they say when you're doing this, you're supposed to have calls to action. So there's my one call to action. If you go to principlesportion.com slash 100, uh, you will find 100 ways you can deliver more at work. At the time, when we were growing the business, what happened was we started growing and we started 
getting uh, some awards, we won an award for an innovation, and, and which was really, really cool, and we got to about five or six, seven million in sales. It was really cool what we'd accomplished, but it was like somewhat inadequate in that it seemed like it was just the endless, endless pursuit of more. More products, more employees, more revenue, more, 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 which obviously as a business, you know, I always look at profit as like, profit for a business is like blood in the human body. It's required for life, but it doesn't have, it's not the purpose of life. And I got bored with the company and I, we made some attempts to try to try to reinvent ourselves. Meaning, I didn't want my legacy to be through dumb luck. I started an internet, com internet company and got rich. Gee, aren't you all happy? I wanted my legacy to be more than that. And so we set out kind of to be on a mission to make people's lives and vehicles better. And our first attempt at trying to change the company culture, uh, we failed. A couple of us wrote out some core values, just stuck on the wall, and a year later I was dumbfounded that nobody embraced them. And uh, on the next attempt, we, we started asking questions. And so I got the whole company to tell me the principles they try to live by. Because one of the things I discovered along the way was that people often have great personal principles they live by, but struggle to bring them into work because they don't want to lose their job, fear, lots of, lots of things. We, we took all these and we, uh, we bucketed them. Once we got everybody's feedback, uh, and we bucketed them, and that became the six guiding principles that we tried to live by. And we, being a little bit in marketing, we rebranded them from core values to guiding principles to help guide decisions. You know, am I delivering more? Am I being transparent? And I'm gonna share a little bit of each of those and then I'll open up for questions. But we started asking questions around, you know, what, what can we do to deliver more to our customers, partners, and employees? And we started getting the answers. What was standing in the way? And what that created was all sorts of things. If you see this uh, picture of these customer comments, we literally had almost every wall full of customer comments because of the service they received from us. One day I was walking through the hallway when I seen those and I like, it dawned on me like, I've been, what, what started uh, Real Truck was I bought, in 1998, I bought some office supplies from staples.com. And that, that was pretty cool. They showed up right at my house and I didn't have to go get my pins and uh, paper or whatever it was I ordered. And I thought, gee, I wonder if you could do this for a pick of a cup. Of course, everybody said no. And it's kind of crazy, you know, sometimes you don't know how things are gonna pan out because um, I initially went back to a manufacturer and I said, hey manufacturer, you should, put up a website and sell your stuff online. They said, no. I said, well, do you mind if I do it? And they said, no. And so, Real Truck was born. And my what my original goal was, because I was a manufacturer's rep at the time, was to talk brick and mortar stores into selling online, and I was terribly unsuccessful at it. But what happened was, is they were too focused on their right now business, not their future business. So we got on this mission to uh, make people's lives and uh, vehicles better, and our first guiding principle we rolled out was uh, deliver more. We wanted to find increasing ways that we're constantly delivering more. And so with customers, back to the customer comments, I about fell over one day when I had this realization. I've been buying stuff online for years and years and years and never have I stopped what I was doing and dropped them an email <coughs> telling them how impressed I was with the experience, not once. Really, and what we tried to do is create memorable experiences. So rather than say, hey, get a free t-shirt or fuzzy dice, if you buy 200 bucks worth of stuff, we would, if you bought 200 bucks worth of stuff, surprise you with fuzzy dice. I mean, who doesn't want fuzzy dice? I mean, you won't buy them with your own money, but if you got them as a gift. And then with employees, we started, one of the things that came out of the accounting department was like, why don't we give uh, the kids of, of the company 10 bucks on their birthday? And then with business partners, uh, the same thing. Some of the things we did were you know, street signs for employees for years of service, and we had to deliver more. One of the things that really kind of helped take off the culture was we created flair, meaning we had buttons and pins and bracelets with a guiding principle, and if someone caught someone practicing a guiding principle, they would give that to them, which is really cool, because what eventually happened was you had an entire company of people catching people doing things right. The next one was Transparency Rocks. Here we were, a North Dakota, a conservative North Dakota company in a Facebook world. It was important that we have transparent communication. 
it, it eliminates rumors. We were expanding and we were building an office upstairs and by the time it got back to me, they're building a 10,000 square foot office for Scott and none of us are gonna get raises for two years and he's gonna have a great big I love racing wall up there. What actually happened was we needed more space fast because we were growing so fast and, but I didn't communicate this, anything to this. So just people just seeing stuff being shuffled around and we're moving, we're expanding offices where it could have been all eliminated if I would have just said, hey, here's a, we're growing really fast. We're uh, moving upstairs also. We're, uh, we're making a bunch of uh, office space so we can uh, move some of the departments up there because we're running out of room, et cetera, et cetera. But I made the mistake at that time of just because I know what's going on People get a lot of comfort if they know what's going on. And what came out of some of the aspect of what can we do to communicate better with employees and customers and staff was, again, asking those um, kind of questions was the Ask Anything program where an employee could ask anything. Initially, I would answer the questions and kick it out to every everyone. Eventually, I would pass it on to whoever area of responsibility that would be best able to answer that question. The other thing that happened was, you know, our, our job postings became more transparent. And at that time, if you were an accountant, say, and you weren't cool with someone walking around with clown shoes, it wouldn't have probably been a good fit at that time. And so uh, oftentimes our, our job postings were very funny and, and really real life, not stuffy, not, it was what, what you were going to get if you came to work for us at that time. I think transparency in today's world is huge in the aspect of uh, one of the things that we would do is when we had our weekly meetings, I would do a video, a what's up in real truck video, and I would share it with the whole company to watch at their convenience, and everybody loved that because I think it helped them connect to the big picture of things and how uh, they fit into it. And I also charged the managers each week, they had uh, to, to shout out one person on their team for one of our guiding principles and one person on someone else's team practicing their guiding principles and I would share those out. That was a real hit as well. Anyway, on the next one was improve on this ideal. One of the things that, that shifted was we had to look at ourselves as not a truck accessory company that sells online. We needed to look at ourselves as an e-commerce company that happened to sell truck accessories to really understand who we were. This also required ongoing change. Like just because we did it yesterday doesn't mean we're gonna do it this way. You know, I started on that ideal of like, we need to question why we do what we do all the time, always, 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 because oftentimes we forget why we're doing it. I used to always share the, the ham story, and the ham story is the little Johnny asks his mom why she cuts the corner of the ham off. Johnny's mom says, I don't know, let's ask grandma. And Johnny asks, grandma, why, does, why do we cut the corner of the ham off when we uh, bake it? And grandma says, I don't know why your mom does it, but I did it because I didn't have a pan big enough. Oftentimes those things get lost. I remember one, you know, being a drop shipper, we'd have hundreds and thousands of invoices coming in. And one day I was in the office and someone was stamping them, boom, with dates received, boom, 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 boom. It's like, why are we stamping all of these invoices? Well, if a vendor doesn't allow an early pay, we'll have proof when we got it. My next question was, well, how often does this happen? A day later comes back, well, never, it's never happened. And to boot, the vendor would have to believe, trust us, that the stamp date was accurate. And so, uh, again, that aspect of this embracing ongoing change, just embracing it, we're gonna always be changing, always be changing, and always be changing. And what that created is all sorts of remarkable things. We had a Learn More, Earn More program. We had a basic training for all. It didn't matter if you were a VP, or if you were uh, on the phones, you went through the same basic training. And because that tied into one of our other guiding principles, be humble. I didn't want to work beside anyone who thought they were better than other people. So this ideal of improve where we could change on a dime, uh, you know, and it created all sorts of things like RT University. The innovation was, the, it created the auto PO bot, which is the thing at that time, it was a nickname we had for something, but it literally, we processed, when I left the company, like 95% of our orders without any human contact. The, the next item of principle is take risks. I'm a risk taker, I have had nothing to lose my whole life, but not all people are wired that way. Like, I remember uh, when I hired someone one time, and they said, you know, well, what if real truck fails? It's like, well, I don't know, I'll just, 
I always thought a real truck failed that just like detailed cars or something. I think I could make a decent living doing that. But we needed to empower people to take risks that we were gonna fail, but we needed to, the risk that we took should be calculated and we should learn from them. And that created all sorts of things from uh, funny postcards to recruiting business. Uh, that was a web development recruiting video with Krusty, featuring Krusty in it. Uh, that was a real hit. And of course, the Storm Truck Project, where we built this truck and brought it to SEMA, and it was a really cool experience for the team. So we needed to take risks. We're going to fail, and all of these guiding principles, we would shout people out, whether it was personal or professional. So if someone took a risk, personally, we would try to shout them out for it. Anyway, on to include fun. It only takes a minute to include fun to anything, to a presentation, to a web page, to a video, to a meeting to anything. It only takes a minute to include a little bit of fun. And uh, if we all got to work 40 hours a week, we might as well do it with people we like and have a good time doing it. And empowering people to do that created all sorts of things. Whether uh, how people answered the phone would create a memorable experience to running ads like that on the front page of the website. We sell bacon and, and truck accessories and we're all out of bacon. <laughs> the other thing was that happened was uh, with our business partners, we, we, we used to do rock star welcomes. And what that was, I don't know if you ever had a rock star welcome, but most of us aren't going to be a rock star in our life. And we wanted to know what can we do to deliver more to our partners. And, and, and they come to it, it North Dakota because it's usually not, North Dakota isn't on people's top state to visit. How can we make it a good experience for these people that fly in to see us? And so it started out, we'd give them a little gift basket of stuff made from North Dakota, and then the next thing you know, someone said, hey, let's, when someone walks into the building, a, a partner, a vendor, let's everybody jump up and scream and shout. And that became the, the, the Real Truck Rock Star Welcome. And the next thing you know, someone added a bubble machine. The next thing you know, you had the best. Next thing you know, and what would happen from that experience is people would say, uh, I've traveled 20 years and this is the most memorable trip I've ever made in business by visiting little old us in little old North Dakota. And uh, lots of uh, dress up days and all those kind of things where we even had a, a Don Johnson dress up day and we celebrated William Shatner's birthday.